you do the work to create the training or the other staff development solution, you invest so much time and energy into creating this thing and it feels like your baby. You send it out into the world and crickets. Has this ever happened to you? How do you know that what you created was any good? How do you know it worked, that it made a difference in the organization or in the live lives of your learners? How do you know? Look, I've been there. I've worked on projects over a year long only to launch the solution in a very anticlimactic way, often loading some information into a learning management system. And then that's it. You're done and left kind of waiting for some kind of loop to close. Is it any good? Should we celebrate? Can I get some feedback? Anything? Is anyone out there? (laughs) Right? We've done this time and time again, and it's hard to have that experience. We may not always get that exciting launch day that we want, but we can do our work in a way that sets us up for success. And that's what we'll discuss today on this week's episode of Learning for Good. Let's dive in. All right, so obviously we want our solutions to work, our staff development solutions, our training, we want them to work. We want them to be effective. We want our organization to benefit and we want our learners to walk away with something that improves their work, whether it's a new skill or a new tactic or a new tool or a new process, right? A new relationship, something that makes their work better and also benefits the organization. But how do we do this? Today, I'm gonna share with you five things we can do to increase the effectiveness of our training and our staff development solutions. Okay, five things. The first thing, we wanna build trust first and always. The second thing, we wanna consider the organization's strategies. And the third thing, we wanna listen to our learners The fourth thing, we want to design solutions with those insights in mind. And the fifth thing is to evaluate and iterate. So let's talk about each of these. The first thing I said is we want to build trust first and always. Trust is essential to making anything else in the organization work. And that includes our staff development solution solutions and our training, right? So we want to make sure that anything that gets created, anything that we're offering to our learners, there is a level of trust that already exists within the organization so that that learner goes, oh, that's for me. That's going to benefit me. They had me in mind. I'm going to do good. I'm going to get better. I'm going to have some self-improvement because I'm attending this training, because they have me in mind. They're looking out for me, right? So we wanna build that trust first and always. It's a, it's a continuation uh, thing. We don't ever stop building trust. We need to constantly be building trust with our learners. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to consider the organization's strategies. Now, something is driving this project. Something is driving the need for a training or a staff development solution. What is that thing that is driving the project? We can often find this in our organization's strategies. So we may want to go back and look at the strategic plan. We may want to take a look at other uh, strategic projects that are happening within the organization. We want to make sure that there is something important, something strategic that is driving the need for this particular solution. When we do that, we're going to, we're making sure that the solution will be relevant to our organization and to our audience. And uh, it's going to be strategic. It's going to have that strategic support. 
The third thing we're going to do is listen to our learners. So this is important too, and a part of building trust, definitely, but we want to hear from them. What is it that our learners are experiencing? What is their day to day like? What challenges are they facing? What skills or experiences are they bringing that will benefit them in this learning process? We want to do this because we can create a training that builds on the skills that they already have that fits within their day to day experience and that helps to remove those barriers from the challenges that they are facing. So when we listen to our learners, it sets us up for the rest of the project. So number four, we want to design our solutions with those insights in mind. So now that we know uh, what the organization is trying to achieve and why, now that we know what our learners are experiencing and why, we can start to build a solution that meets those needs. And so everything we do, everything we create will point back to what we learned. These are the organization's strategies. This is why we're doing the things that we're doing. This will help our organization achieve those goals. This is what the learner is experiencing. These are the skills they're bringing that we're going to build upon. These are the challenges that they are facing. And this is how we're going to use the solution to remove those barriers. Everything builds from that information, from those insights that we got in the first, um, sorry, step two and three, um, the analysis that we're doing. Okay, so we're going to design our solutions with those insights in mind. And then the last number five is to evaluate and iterate. So once you have this training up and running, yes, you might load it into a learning management system or hand it off to a trainer or some other you know, process for launching. There's sometimes a handoff that happens. And so that can feel very anticlimactic, but it doesn't have to be the end. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have some process set up so that we can continue to evaluate and iterate on that solution. So are we getting feedback once we have that training or that staff development solution launched? Are we getting feedback from the organization, from whoever is owning that strategic priority? Are we getting feedback from the learners and what they're experiencing? Are we getting feedback from the trainers if there are trainers involved or coaches so that we know that Anything we're creating, right? It's meeting the mark for the organization. It's meeting the mark for the learners. And we know that those who are helping us with implementation are also having a good experience. So this helps give us feedback that we can use to iterate as needed so that that training, that staff development solution can continue to be the best that it can possibly be for the organization and for the learner. So these five tips, Build trust first and always, consider your organization's strategies, listen to your learners, design your solutions with those insights in mind, and then evaluate and iterate. These five tips can help set your training and your staff development solutions up for success. And they're pretty easy to implement within your organization. But if you want support with this process from start to finish, my team is here for you. We'd love to help you create the exact solutions that you need to achieve your organization's staff development goals. All right, friends, was this episode helpful for you? Leave a review and let me know. That's how I know what content resonates with you most. Do you know someone else in the field who would benefit from this episode? Share it with them so that someone else in our field can also hear these tips. Want more content like this? Go ahead and hit subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next time on Learning for Good.